Kyle Field, home to the Texas A&M Aggies, the Corps of Cadets, the world-famous 12th man, Lady Reveille, and from early indications, a whole throng of Aggies ready to make some noise. There's nothing quite like a great rivalry matchup in college football. The bitterness, the intensity, the lifetime of memories that will come as a result of what we're about to see in this one. As we'll see, the number six team in the country, the Texas Longhorns, taking on the 10th ranked team in the land, the Texas A&M Aggies. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. The Longhorns will put total leather and will get started. Here he comes from inside his own five. And he's able to pick his way through the traffic nicely for a good return on that one before he's brought down. So the Texas A&M Aggies offense will have the first possession of the game. The Lone Star State has a ton of rivalries, but this one outshines all the rest. Yeah, and the three of us have had an opportunity to call this game in the past, and you can just feel the tradition when these two teams take the field, right, David? You got the 12th man, you got Bevo. This is special. Yeah, you got one side that thinks they're way better than the other side. The other side thinks they're way better. I'll let you decide which one picks which, but every year, no love lost. Now on second down. They'll go to the ground. Finding a way to put that foot in the ground and get it up to the 37-yard line. I think they called that knowing they weren't going to hit a home run. So why would you call it then? Well, you call it so third down becomes an easier down. It's not third and long where I have to pass the football. Now all options on the table. And to keep this opening drive going, they'll need to convert third and one. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. And boy, is he close to that first down, maybe just a couple of inches short. Well, we knew this offense came into this one wanting to establish the run on their first three plays of the game in their own end. Run, 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 but they don't pick up the first down. Now, it'll be interesting to see if they continue running the football their next time out. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. On the return, it's Bolden. They're able to put a stop to that return right at the 30-yard line. So the Texas Longhorns offense has the ball for the first time. One thing to watch, can this guy get in the quarterback's head and make him take a peek at the rush, David? Dang, Skippy, that's what you want to do. You want to make this guy a little bit more human and not as much of a game-breaker at the quarterback spot? Get some pressure on him, hit him a few times. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, but he can't hurt you if he's laying on his back. And this defensive end can put him there often you can barely hear yourself thinking here as they're trying to get this defense off to a good start from the gun the ground game they bring him down and he's going to lose a yard on that one and when you play defensive end it's all about getting off the football you can tell Gets off the football really fast. Gets in the backfield. Gets the running back before he knows what hit him. What a play by the defensive end. Better find the earplugs. Here comes the noise. Backing this defense on third down. Looking downfield. It's Ewers. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. Flying out to the left. Slippery slide. Find his way and ran away from the crowd into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas! And it feels good to land that first big punch against a rival, doesn't it? No doubt. In a game like this, too, you just want to be executing it at a high level early. So, David, that's got to feel great getting on the board first. And settles everyone down. All the nerves, all the emotion of this rivalry game. Now everybody can kind of settle in because you know you already got a touchdown on the board. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point makes it 7-0. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And they finish the drive with a 64-yard scoring toss. 
about to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. He'll bring it back from inside his five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Used to play fake. Now to throw. He's open on the right. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. I know it's something we take for granted, guys, but the Q did a great job there with the play action fake. He really took his time and sold it. And that's what froze the linebackers in the second level of the defense to help make that completion a whole lot easier. Trying play action. He'll off one deep down the left side. And it's knocked away downfield. The DB getting a hand in there. Did Bevo really get his name after altering a brand on his backside put there by Texas A&M students? So many questions to answer since 1894, guys. And that's what's so cool about this rival. When you have the back and forth and who did what, going all the way back to 1894, Reese's first birthday, what an amazing <laughs> rival. There have been a lot of good players during that stretch, too. Think about Ricky Williams from the Horns, Johnny Manziel, Texas A&M. So many great coaches have patrolled the sidelines in this rivalry for years. Trying to move the sticks on third down. Looking downfield, it's Wegman. Dumps it to the back. Oh, they really could have used that catch. Their physical pass defense, it brings up a fourth down. This is a point where you just got to be able to focus. And the critical down and distances in this game, like that third down right there, when it's a good throw, you got to make the catch. You got to be able to make that play. The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. They'll look to pin them deep. He'll bring it back. It's Bolden. The solid return there offsets some of the punt yardage and really sets up this offense nicely. And here comes the Texas offense back on the field. David, they love to do what they did last time and put this one in the end zone. You ain't lying. They did a great job. The offense was clicking. Everything went well. Palmer, they executed and got the touchdown. And they really were in a nice rhythm as well. And I'd love to see that here on the next drive, too. Just keep doing what you're doing. Everything seems to be working, and you seem to have this defense on their heels. Not what they had in mind to start this drive. Here comes second and 13. He's looking to throw. Got a man. It's Golden. And a good job in coverage there as they stop it after just a few. Smokey the Cannon was firing the last time these two teams met as Texas pulled out a close one. You know, when winning teams win a rivalry game like this, they get the bragging rights. That just seems like it, it's magnified in this state, though. That was a huge win for Texas a year ago. Wait a minute. You mean everything's bigger in Texas? We've never heard that before. Obviously, when you beat the Aggies in a rivalry game, the bragging rights run deep for a whole year. This dude, and wait just a second, the official's going to take a second look at this one. After taking another look, just to confirm everything, the officials on the field got it right. Play will stand. Give to the running back. They pick up half of it. It'll be second and five. Hey, five to six yards a pop. I don't know if you guys are really good at math, but... That usually equals a first down every couple carries. So don't forget about the run game. Keep them honest. Pound that rock. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. The run from the shotgun. And a really short game before he gets a whole bunch of company from the defense. The hiatus in this great rivalry has been way too long, but guys, we were there the last time they squared off in 2011, and how great is it to have A&M and Texas back? It's one of the most special rivalries in all college football, and unfortunately, with conference realignment, it took this game away, but now that they're both back in the SEC, David, we're back on in this great game. Yeah, and we get to continue the hate, the pettiness. Just, you, you gotta love them, and that's what makes rivals so good. In-state rivals going at it. We lose that with conference realignment, but we get it back with this one. 
And now on fourth down, they'll try a field goal. This field goal attempt is going to be an even 50-yarder. He boomed it through a 50-yard field goal, showing off that powerful leg. Well, you're always going to wonder what would have, could have, should have happened on fourth and inches had they gone for it. But with this kicker, I like taking three points and putting it on the board. They were able to get a field goal on the board, and now they'll kick it away. He'll start the return inside his five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And a great job by the linebacker. You could tell starting to crowd the line of scrimmage, get up there in the line of scrimmage, see it, diagnose it, get in the backfield, get the running back on the ground for the tackle for the loss. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Out of the gun, the give to the back. Get some work done there. Pick up a four to the 22. And runs like that are like body blows in a boxing match. Four, five, six-yard gains early turn into 20, 30, 40-yard gains later. They really wear down defenses, and they test their physicality. A third and long coming up here. Looking to throw, it's Wegman. Just had to get rid of that one to save the yardage on third down. Not all incompletions are the same. And listen, it's third down. I want to make a play. I want to throw the football down the field, get a first down. But sometimes it's the right decision to do what he just did. Don't make a big turnover. Don't make a big mistake. Just throw the football in the crowd. Texas A&M will have to boot it away. Makes a move. Working his way on the return up to the 40-yard line before he stopped. Here comes the Texas offense. You want to talk about having a weapon to bail out a drive? David, that's why kickers are so important after that long field goal. Yeah, and listen, important is a relative term. We need to make longer passes and get better gains so we don't have to kick long field goals, Palmer, again on offense. And they've got the weapons to do that, David. They just got to be able to dial those plays up. Guys have to be able to make them one-on-one -on -one to make life easier on this kicker, who is so important to this team. They'll finally drag him down, but not before he gets it to the 40, and it's a first down. Yeah, I tell you what, when you start a game in the first quarter and you show me I will run my quarterback like you did here, it makes me defend the whole field. It makes me a lot more nervous. You can tell this quarterback will be a threat throughout this football game. He'll come out throwing on first down. Catch in the middle. It's held. He stopped just a chain link or two away from the first down and sets them up beautifully here. Yeah, this defense is going to have to have a plan for this tight end, especially when he lines up in the slot, because there's a lot of different routes he can run. And because of his size and his wingspan, he's very, very difficult to cover. Fast motion from the offense. Looking for a man. It's Ewers. And that pass will be jarred loose on second down. That brings up third down. Just didn't seem like the quarterback and his intended target were on the same page there. They've worked it down to the 30. This defense standing tall, trying to force a field goal try. Snagged in the middle. It's golden. He'll come through on third downs. He's got enough, and they'll mark it at the 23. Guys, it is Texas who holds the lead. They largely dominated this first quarter as indicated by the stats. Yeah. 
just about ready to get things started here in the second. We'll see if they continue to flex that muscle. Comes out throwing on first down. Grab behind the line. It's Moore. Got enough space. Gets out of bounds after the big play, and they'll be set up in business with a first and goal. All right, second quarter, getting closer to the half. Offense is still having a lot of success, stringing some first downs together. Defense is going to need to figure something out before they get to halftime. And the Longhorns will try to punch it in on first and goal. Touch pass on the jet sweep. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. Great heads up awareness by the cornerback on that play. He saw the receiver get the ball. He shot downhill and made a nice tackle. Can the defense stop them again on second and goal? The give. Nice, solid form tackle from this sophomore. So loud, it's rattling your fillings on third and goal. Trying to power it in. Going right back to the well, and this time he finds water. Gets it into the end zone for the touchdown. That touchdown gives his team a pretty significant lead at this point. And that's what you want. You want to start fast. You want everything to come out and start clicking, make some plays. It doesn't always work that way, but when you do, man, the energy, the crowd, everybody's into it. Now the other team better respond. They'll try to add another to their lead. And with the extra point, they now have a three-possession lead at 17. That touchdown drive covered 61 yards. And they closed the deal, pushing their way inches into the end zone. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. And he takes this from inside the five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Trailing now by 17, David, this is an opportunity that they need to answer. And down by 17, it's not panic mode yet. Like, I know we just gave up some points, and our defense hasn't played great. I think this offense can still be who they are and stay consistent. No doubt, lots of football to go, but you do get the feeling this is the time of game where, you know, it could get bad. If you don't score and all of a sudden they get the ball back, they take it down the field and put some points up, this thing might be over. So absolutely, this quarterback, he wants to drive this offense down the field and at least put something on the board. And a lot of times you want those big plays. You want those splash plays, but sometimes... You're going to take some losses. You're not going to run the football overly well. But if you continue to run it, you can at least create some balance. You at least have the threat of it. Otherwise, you're just going to abandon it, and now it's just going to be a passing game. They'll try to run for it. Now they'll really try to get this drive going. Good execution on third down as they have it first and 10 at the 31. And that's so tough as a defense because they only got to get inches. But I got to find a way to somehow get a knockback, stop the running back's feet right there. I couldn't do it. He gets downhill just enough, and he gets the first down. It's a good job, too, there on third down by the offense because a major statistic in football in terms of winning and losing is how good are you at staying on the field, keeping drives a lot. Whether it's third and long or third and inch, you just have to go execute, and they do it. Pushes ahead for a couple. They'll mark it at the 33. Yeah, and the running back didn't get much here, but, you know, you clearly want to always establish the tempo, run the football, be consistent, make that defense physically meet the challenge. And the Aggies racing to the line in the hurry up. They think they can impose their will here with the run to the right. Showed off just about every move in the book, except the forward move stopped for a short game.
Let's see what they do on third down. Back to throw, it's Wegman. He lobs one high down the left side. And they can't hook up on the big play, and that brings up a fourth down. Well, at this juncture in the game, and with how the scoreboard looks, no question this offense is going to have to throw to get back in the game. And it's going to be tricky now because the defense is expecting it. You're going to throw into a lot of big zone coverages with everybody's eyes on the quarterback. Not going to be easy. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Here's the fair catch, and he'll make it close to the 20-yard line. And here come the horns. They've got it again on offense. Wide receiver now comes in motion. Looking to move it through the air. And the pressure was too much. They get him at the 15. Well, we knew coming into this game, this defense had some matchups they felt really good about up front, and they won one right there. Getting to the quarterback, creating a negative play, and they're going to need these guys to start winning more of those because they are finding themselves in a hole here early in the game. So now they'll try to mitigate that disaster on second down from the 15. Motion from the offense. On second down, wants to throw. Makes a catch down the right side. Off he goes. And he ran away from the crowd, and he'll take it in. Touchdown, Longhorns! When these offenses get in a the rhythm, they're hard to stop. Already up early, got a short field, take advantage of it too, get another touchdown. This offense is doing whatever they want to do and having a lot of success. On to attempt the try. And with the extra point, they push the lead out a little further. Aggressive play calling on that drive. Just two plays, they get the long touchdown pass to pay it off. Kickoff team is on the field. They'll try to drive this one deep. On the run from inside his own five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. They face a pretty tall mountain here, Jesse, down 24, but if they're going to climb it, this is a good time to start. Sense of urgency's got to be big right here. You just get the feeling at this point of the game, David, they've got to score on this drive. Obviously, their defense needs to get stops, but at this point, offensively, they've got to execute much better. They, they got to be super aggressive. Down 24, you're going to need three touchdowns, three two-point conversions, everything to kind of go your way. So fast and throw in the football. Red pass, it's complete. And he'll run across the sidelines after the good game. I love the anticipation on that throw by the QB on the out route. you got to throw it before the receiver comes out of his break. Nice work. Wow, this offense is just stuck in the mud. They've already punted four times, and it's third down now. They'll keep this drive moving by picking up the first down. They have it at the 36. And you know, big chunks like this don't happen unless you commit to the run game. You got to get those big boys up front into the game, understanding I want to knock people off the football, create some holes like you do here for my running back, make the game easy. The Aggies will have it first and ten. They're going to ride this running back. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. Linebackers have such an amazing responsibility. Got to play run, got to play pass. How about this? Seeing the run aggressively, getting downhill, and getting in the backfield and making the tackle for a loss. Couldn't get him blocked on that last one. Now it's second and 14. Looking for room. It's Moss. Not a lot of daylight. He gets one to the 32. All right. Well, the offense here, they're trying to get this run game established. They obviously don't break off a long run there, but they're just trying to find their footing at this point. 
They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. On third and long, you'll need to push it downfield. He took a hit as he threw it and couldn't deliver the football. It's incomplete and fourth down's coming. Yeah, and on money down defensively, you got to find ways to affect the quarterback. Nice job by the defense getting the pressure, getting to him, getting a hit on him, and forcing the incompletion, and now forcing the fourth down. Another punt on the way. Got to make sure those hammies and glutes all activated. Don't want any muscle pulls from overuse. They'll get down and put a stop to this return. They'll mark it at the 32. Wide receiver shows motion. They'll run the RPO and fire to the right. They stop him just short of the first down, but it will be second and inches coming up. And after that pitch and catch, he's already over 200 yards, and we're in the first half, Jesse. Man, Reese, he's dialed in right now. He's really doing a nice job seeing the field, reading coverages, and finding his open guy. From the shotgun, the inside gear. And the Longhorns get it past the sticks. You got to have short area quickness. That running back there doing what it takes to make sure he got that first down. As we reach the two-minute warning, they'll need to try to get a stop to keep this thing from getting out of hand. Now they'll line it up from the 44 on first and 10. He's looking to throw it. Fires to the big fella. He knew exactly where he wanted to go with that one, and they've got enough for the first down. This offense is clicking, and clearly everything is working. The offensive coordinator's calling good plays. The quarterback and his unit is executing. And this defense right now, they have no answers. Now it's a first down from the 43-yard line. He wants to throw. He's going to fire deep. And this is dropped. Incomplete pass. He had a huge gain in his fingers, and he couldn't hold on. And the offense clearly saying, we want to take those deep shots. We want to be aggressive. And I, and I think that's a good strategy because it makes the defense really honor what you're going to do. And just missed a little bit, but I wouldn't be surprised if this offense finds a way to come back to some of those deep balls. Grab behind the line. It's blue. How about those sweet twinkle toes like moves as he gets to the 38? Listen, running backs are not just running backs anymore. You're going to be a wide receiver in today's football. And a great job sneaking out of the backfield, getting the football, letting them get some positive yards. Ball at the 38. The defense will try to get a stop on third and short. They're going to throw it again. Oh, he's going to try to hit him deep. And it's picked off at the goal line. He'll try to take it back. He steps out of bounds, but not only does he get the ball back, what a return to set up his offense. And defensive backs, you think, don't have good hands. The big fella shows it. How about that defensive back going up and getting the interception? Nice job breaking on the football. You say that's why you play defense, because you don't have hands? Yeah. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Boy, they've been caught in a buzzsaw here in the first half, but maybe a chance to carry some momentum into the break here. It all comes down to this drive right here, Reese. Obviously, this offense hasn't had everything go right for them in the first half, but here's an opportunity, David, to execute some plays, put some throws together, and generate some points. And you're right, Jesse, and this offense needs to start now. Like, we got to get some points on the board, create some momentum, and continue it, because you've dug yourself a significant hole. Looking to throw, it's Wegman. And he was drilled just as he released the pass. It's incomplete. And that defender was just smothering the quarterback on that screen attempt. You know, the QB's taught to hold on to it to the last possible second. He had no shot trying to negotiate that defender. Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. From the gun, wants to pass catch in the middle it's barber timeout is called and it's the defense wanting to make sure that everyone's on the same page for this big down i really like this slot receiver because of his shiftiness and you see that on his route run really really nice job creating separation for his qb 
Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Cover guys do their job, and they get him stopped at the 22-yard line. The Longhorns sending the offense back onto the field. They've got some time to work with here, Jesse, and if they get a first down, they might really get aggressive. I'd be aggressive right out of the gate. I'd be throwing for a first down. If I get it, then it's pedal to the metal. I'm in that two-minute mode to try to score a touchdown or get a field. But I do think this is a situation where you also have to understand that I have the lead going into the half. I've got the momentum, so don't do anything stupid here. Second down coming up. He's looking to throw. He tosses one high and deep down the left side. He's got it downfield for a huge game. Hey, the defense knew coming into this one this guy was going to be a factor, but they have done nothing to stop him. They don't have any answers. This guy already has over 100 yards receiving, and we're not even done the half. This offense always looking for those big, explosive plays, and now they've got it just inside the 30. Getting some heat. And he was hit just as he was releasing the pass, and it falls to the ground incomplete. Doesn't take this defense a lot of time to get to the quarterback, man. They've got speed all over the place. They hit him so quickly, and because of that, the ball falls incomplete. Let's see what they've got on second down. Looking for a man. It's Ewers. He just missed the target on that one. Got to put it on his body. Well, the good news is he did a nice job reading the coverage. He knew exactly where to go with the football that time. Just a little bit too much on that pass. You wonder if that's just nerves. He's got to settle himself down a little bit. Just a few seconds remaining here as they try to put something up before halftime. On third and long, he has to throw for it. Got it in the middle, it's Bond. And he's brought down after a nice game. And this junior quarterback shows you why the scouts love that big arm of his. We've got a timeout in the waning seconds of the half. Maybe a chance to get off a couple more plays. And they'll have to settle for a field goal try. Smashes it between the uprights. And now the lead is extended a little further. So they get the late field goal right before the half and not much time after this kickoff for an answer. From inside his own 10, he'll try to help out their field position. He'll be brought down, and that's the final play of the half. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Guys, think of all the big-time players who've been a part of this game, and we have a few more vying for that status so far today in an always emotional duel between the Longhorns and the Aggies. And there is no better place to start this halftime than by reviewing how this wideout has been a one-man wrecking crew. The kid's been everywhere. And I love how he's willing to go across the middle, but that he also has the Jets to burn these DBs on the deep ball. If this defense wants to actually come back in this one, they better hide his cleats. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how the fight between Texas A&M and Texas plays out. The Longhorns will kick it off to start the second half. On the move from inside is five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. So now the Longhorns take over, and they'll send out the offense. Off the play fake on first down. Unloads to the wideout. Holds it in. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. 
I'll tell you, this quarterback has just been in a great rhythm all game long. With that last completion, he's now over 300 yards passing. They really got things moving on this drive. Second play of the drive comes from the 37. Wide out in motion. To the air, it's Ewers. Excellent coverage and good use of the hands to knock it away. Well, I know that one fell incomplete, but what a day this guy's had throwing the football. Multiple touchdowns, and he's done a really nice job with his decision-making. Hasn't thrown any picks, which has really helped keep this offense on schedule. After the quarterback and receiver failed to hook up, they'll try it again on second down. With the catch, it's Golden. There to make the tackle, but the big throw is good enough to give them a first down. And I think this receiver's forte is his route running. He's a guy that can line up all over the field, but it's not just catching post routes and goes. This guy can run shallows. He can run slants. He can run the option routes and find soft spots in the defense. This guy really has all the routes in his toolbox. On the run, it's blue. I never know if it's grammatically correct to say a team is being out physical. You hear it a lot in football, though. That's happening in this game. They are just not getting the push they need all game long up front to have any success when they decide to run it. Got three on first down. It's second and seven. He'll try it again. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. Goodness gracious, if you blinked, you missed it. Horrible blocking up front. Defender gets in there so fast. Did he line up in the backfield? If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third and long, try to convert through the air. Got it in the middle of its helm. How about this backer in pass coverage and bringing the big hit stick with him, too? You gotta love that. On defense, one of the most critical statistics out there is how do you play on third down? How do you prevent the opponent from keeping drives alive? Right there, tackling the catch. You gave up the completion. whoop de doo You set up fourth and long. You're gonna get the ball back. Go get some water and celebrate. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. And that one will find its way into the end zone for a touchback. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. Caught over the middle. It's green. And the defense settled in to stop that one for a short game. I'll say this, man. In college football, you see a lot of bad tackling. You didn't see it right there. That was an awesome job. First off, being there at the point of attack, once the tight end made the catch, there was no doubt he was going down. Great job form tackle. A little bit more to go after that last completion. They'll try to pick it up on second down. Makes the catch. It's Allen. They're able to get him stopped just shy of the first down mark. I love offenses and quarterbacks that are willing to take the easy stuff. Take those easy throws that are guaranteed to get positive yards. Yeah, I'm going to take big shots down the field, too. But don't forget, it's easier to pick up second and five, third and five, than it is when we start getting those long yarded situations. Dropping back, it's Wegman quickly to the tight end. And that stiff arm is a weapon for this runner. He uses it and picks up a first down. Third and short, and I guess the only thing they really took out of play in the shotgun was the quarterback sneak. Yeah, and that's kind of what I like to do, Reese. I mean, third and inches, I, I want to run the quarterback sneak, run the football, but this team fully comfortable throwing the football, and you see why. Easy pitch, easy catch, first down. Grabbed on the outside, it's Allen. And he'll make his way out of bounds after the solid pickup. Well, you can tell those two have been practicing the out route all offseason long. They look like they could have completed that in their sleep. Trying to get a rhythm in the passing game. Now on second down. They'll give it to the back. Just a solid stop by this sophomore. They've got it at the 41, third and short, trying to keep the chains moving. From the gun, wants to pass. He took a hit as he threw it and couldn't deliver the football. It's incomplete, and fourth down's coming. 
And finally, the defense is able to get some pressure on this quarterback. They had been trying all game long different ways to affect him, weren't able to get there. But on that play, because of the pressure, it affected his accuracy, and that's why the ball falls incomplete. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Cover guys do their job, and they get him stopped at the 22-yard line. So Texas has it again, and here comes the offense. Wants to throw on first down off the play fake. Just masterful working that sideline and getting the toe down for the catch. They just can't seem to cover this guy. He keeps getting open, even when he's running out of space on the sideline. Yeah, running out of space, they're still going to feature him. They, they see the matchup, and look at the balance and the coordination and just knowing where I'm out on the field to get the feet inbounds and secure the catch. What a play and what a day for this young man. And he does a really nice job finding open space and making a good gain before the stop is made. I know it's sexy to throw the football, but if you can pound it away and get these kind of gains, they will just add up, wear the defense down, get first downs, and ultimately get some points. Good spot after that seven-yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. Back to throw. It's Ewers. Wide open downfield. Touchdown, Texas! And the punishment has been extended. Now they have extended this lead, guys, starting to put the hammer, but sometimes a rivalry game can give you a little of extra fight back. And there can be no panic at this point now. You've worked too hard this offseason, David. They've had this game circled for so long. You've got to play your best football right now and fight back. And you just need something good to happen on this next possession. You've got to get the crowd back into this football game. Big rivalry. Get some emotion. Get some momentum on your side. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. The kick is up and good and put one more on the lead. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And they cover the final 54 yards with the explosive play in the passing game for six. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. Here he comes from inside his own five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Pulls a fire complete. They stop him almost immediately. Short game there, and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. My old coach said, you'll never go broke taking a profit. Take what's there, take the positive yards, and never complain. Running game worked on first down. Let's see if they go back to it on second down. He'll do it himself. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And that option game can be tricky, right? But nice job by the defense playing assignment football. And watch the linebacker. You could tell. Locked in on the quarterback. Chases him down. Gets to him. And not only gets to him, doesn't let him break a tackle. Gets him on the ground. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. Quick strike complete. Building momentum, picking up a chunk of yardage, moving the chains out to the 34. Nice poise by the quarterback. Here's a big third down throw, and you want to push the ball vertically down the field, but if the defense takes it all away, check the ball down. Get it to your running back, and let him go do the work and move the sticks for you. They'll go to the counter. Still on his feet at the 45. They wrestle him to the ground, but he's got plenty for a first down. First down, physicality wins football games. Being able to run the football and create balance. And, and right here, just chews up another first down. Gives you another chance to maybe continue to run the football. And I feel like this guy, too, is just an explosive play waiting to happen. His vision, his quickness, and he's got a burst. If you give this guy just a crease, he's going to hit it. And right now, he's doing some damage on this defense.
Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Back to throw. It's Wegman. Gets it out fast. And they pick up just a few on that completion. And listen, I know that wasn't a huge gain. It was positive, but I like doing more of that in today's college football. I'm just going to try to give my playmakers a chance to do damage in space away from all the big boys inside. Now facing a third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. He's got an open man. Just carving up this defense and getting it down to the 24. And they just want to give this guy a chance to make a play on third down. And more times than not, he is going to deliver. And he's so good, so efficient, such a good route runner, got the speed, got the complete game. So you definitely want to highlight him, and especially on those downs that matter the most. If something's not open quick underneath, find him. He'll make those contested catches. They've avoided the interception all day, but they're lucky to get that one back here late. It'll be second down. Yeah, nice coverage, and you'd like to snag that interception, but there's always a reason why these thoroughbred athletes play defense. And it's usually because of their lack of hands, like you just saw. Second and ten after the previous play. The play action fake. A shot for the end zone. And he's got it! Touchdown, Aggie! Well, I'm not sure who was closer to the receiver there, the defensive backs or us here in the booth. <laughs> that was great execution on offense. Receiver wins the route one-on-one, -on -one, shows off his speed, gets himself wide open. There was no question where the quarterback was going with that ball. Nice job. Lining up for the PAT. Right down the middle. They go 83 yards on the drive, and they finish things up with a dart from 24 yards out. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. And they thought about a return, then thought better of it. They'll bring it out to the 25. And here comes the Texas offense back on the field. Going to the running game. Finds that crease, and he's got four out to the 29. And it's just simple. Simple first down run, showing your physicality, setting your offense up in a good spot. Offense gets set for second down. Guys, it is Texas who holds the lead. This has been utter domination through three quarters, and the stats will back that up. One more period to go, and we'll see just how much fight they've got left in them. Line getting set on second down. Going to run it. It's blue. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. It's going to be tough sledding for the offense here. They're trying to ice this game by running the football and bleeding the clock. They've got a pretty good lead here late in the game, but the defense knows the run's coming, right? So they're going to be loading the line of scrimmage, getting stops like what they just did. Be interesting to see what the offense does on this next one. They'll put the tight end in motion. Hard running there. They'll keep this drive moving by picking up the first down. They have it at the 36. I'll tell you, this guy can just take games over. He can just make things happen when it doesn't look like anything's there. That time they go RPO. They're expecting to throw the football and have to make a play, but nobody's open. And this is like Sandlot football. He just tucks the ball himself and he goes and gets it. He knows where he is on the field. He knows where he needs to get to get that first down. He's just playing above the X's and O's. Right Makes the stop at the 49, but not before he gets in plus territory, gets 15 and a first down. The Longhorns are moving quickly down the field. Oh. 
right back to the well. And he's a real nowhere man tackled in this no-gain land. you got to have that defense you know you can go to in running situations. Your base defense where you say, okay, this is where I'm going to start and I'm going to stop the run, stuff it up front. My guys play big up front. And then if I need to add some blitzes to it later on down the road, I can. But great job in the base defense making a play. Coming after it. And they got him. They'll get him down for the sack. This defense, they are tenacious. And they've got guys up front that are athletic and that are so strong and then can collapse the pocket. You saw it right there in that play action attempt. Even if they don't convert, picking up a few would give them a decision to make on fourth down. It's third and long from the 45. Takes the handoff. It's blue. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. That linebacker was a heat-seeking missile, and the heat that he sought was the ball carry. Great job, great feel. Linebackers are making all the calls in the defense and understanding when I need to come through that gap and come through with bad intentions. Those guys are usually 245 pounds of heat-seeking missile. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Was looking for more running room, but found nothing but more tacklers. He's down at the 24. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. And the physical play there forces the incompletion on first down. You see an incompletion there. I think a big reason why this team is in such a hole right now in the fourth quarter is they have just not been able to find the explosive plays throwing the ball. And you got to wonder at this point, is it too little too late? This offense has a second down play. To throw, it's Wegman. Right on target this time. That's a really good tackle there, giving up some size and still making the play. You just get the feeling this defense is going to make it hard on them, right? They've got the lead, it's late, and they're going to try to tackle everybody inbounds. Offense is going to have to really work for this and be smart. you got to attack the sidelines. you got to throw first downs. you got to keep this thing moving vertically down the field. Finds the tight end. Good tackle there to stop him short of the first down. It'll bring up a big decision. This offense has their work cut out for them, man, because the coverage has been so tight. And if you're not throwing to the sideline or you're not getting past the sticks, this defense is going to tackle you inbounds like they just did on that last play and bleed the clock. Running for it on fourth down. He's not going to make it. And what a big stop for this defense. And they might be able to put this thing away. From the gun, the running back has it. Not much room to run. Let's give him one to the 33. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. The give from the gun. Brought down just outside the red zone. He moves the chains. It's at the 22. And you want to dominate the football game like these guys have all day. Dominate the line of scrimmage. You know, turn and hand the ball off to your running back. It's a good recipe. It makes every quarterback better. It makes every OC better. Just turn, hand the football off, especially when you're winning the ball game. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Caught in the backfield, it's Golden. He's brought down solid pickup, but a little bit short of the first down. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre-snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly. And that's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm right now. The Longhorns are threatening in the red zone. Dropping back, it's Ewers. Works the middle. Tackled after picking up the first down. They showed great trust in their quarterback right there, and why not? He's had an outstanding game. An outstanding game has taken care of the football. Now late in the game, you got the lead. That first down now tells me now it's time to start running the football, run the clock, get out of here with the dub. The 
They'll keep it on the ground. They want this clock to move. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. I'll tell you, this defensive end, not only can he pass rush, but he can play the run as well. You see him beat the offensive lineman there trying to block him and get in the backfield to make that tackle for a loss. That was impressive. Second down coming up on this red zone opportunity. He's looking to throw. He's got it on the move. Touchdown, Longhorns! And the beatdown has ensued. Horns are up, and the eyes of Texas are focused on building the lead against the Aggies. And the Horns are capturing this momentum. Listen, a lot of angst, a lot of nervousness early in the game, Palmer. But now Texas in this rivalry game taking over. Yeah, you're right. Hook them right now. They're just enforcing their will in this game. They're the more physical team at this point. Texas A&M, they've got an uphill battle here. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And the score comes on a 12-yard touchdown pass. The kickoff team out there set to boot it away. The returner will field it and try to do some business. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. First down here with time for maybe one more play until the two-minute warning. Wants to throw. It's Wegman working the middle of the field, and it's complete. And that is good versatility there and a big hit from the backer in pass coverage. Set up for second and short after that completion. He's looking to throw. Grabbed in the middle. It's Watson. Good call. Good execution as they move the chains and they have a first down at the 38. I don't know who on defense is going to cover this guy. Honestly, he could be a problem for this defense over the middle of the field in the passing game. It's first and 10 from the 38-yard line. He's going to pass. Grabbed over the middle. It's Barber. Makes the catch and he's brought down. And this offense is going to have to find more explosive plays. And it's, it's it can't just rely on the dink and dunk. It's going to have to find itself and score more points. Listen, they got beat up today. But moving on in the future, they've got some good pieces. they got to find a way to fit them together, create some explosive plays on this offense, because today they've been lacking. Caught in the backfield. It's Watson. And the defense holds firm. No pickup at all on that play. Really good defense. You know, you're trying to stay as close as you can to all these targets, and most importantly, those open field tackles and getting them on the ground as soon as they catch it. That's a major deal for defenses, and that was a good example there of it. And a missed opportunity on third down as the defense knocks it free, and fourth down is coming up. And this defense has put a game together. Like, it is hard to put all the facets of defense together. Run defense, pass defense. They've been so good, man. Dialed in. You could tell they were ready. They were fast. They were physical. They dominated this football game today. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Running it back. It's Bolden. Was looking for more running room, but found nothing but more tacklers. He's down at the 24. Here comes the Texas offense. They're in command of this game. Now let's see if they tried to rub a little salt in the wound or happy with getting the W. Yeah, and listen, this, this makes the post-game handshake fun sometimes. If you do choose to rub a little salt in it and keep chucking and keep scoring, I'm here for it, Jesse. Like, your job is to score points. It's my job to stop it. Keep the foot to the accelerator. Keep trying to play ball. I agree a thousand percent. That's like Steve Spurrier back in the day when I was playing for the Gators. You go and play for him because you want the opportunity to, to throw the ball. So when you get in the game late, you're not handing it off. We were beating Central Michigan by 80-something points. He was still letting us throw the football. It's the defense's job to stop you. 